Hi and welcome to the board wrap up for this July 2011. That's right, it's already July. The summer is about half over with and we do have a special guest on our board wrap up. Uh, Superintendent Pennington not with us uh, this month. We're going to talk with Dr. Nancy Neiman with the Ponca City Public Schools uh, about what's going on this summer, about what you can expect as we head for the fall, and it's hard to believe, but uh, Dr. Neiman, here we are uh, about two and a half to three weeks before a lot of employees will start reporting for work, too. That's right, and it's always wild and crazy this time of year. We've hired around 19 new teachers, so we're excited about that. It's a very small amount, but we actually had two resignations yesterday, so we'll be out uh, shopping for about three more teachers in the next few weeks. But most importantly, also, or as importantly, we have a new high school principal, Mr. Kent Marshall. Uh, give me your thoughts on the hiring of Kent Marshall, who uh, certainly was, was trained under two very good principals, Mr. Woody and then uh, Dr. Hannaford. And Kent Marshall was an assistant principal, and uh, I'm not sure whether he thought he'd be thrown in there this quickly, but I know he's very excited. I've visited with him several times about this new position. It's a great opportunity for Kent, and we're thrilled to have him on board in this capacity. We first hired him as a teacher, and then eventually he's worked his way up to an assistant principal. Um, he's had administrative experience prior to coming to Ponca City several years ago. I believe he's been with us eight or nine years, some, somewhere around in there. Has been a coach and, and a teacher. Um, we had several applicants for the high school principal position, and uh, we had a team of people on that committee, and Kent floated right to the top. Sometimes it works that way and sometimes it doesn't. Right. Uh, people always ask how you determine hiring somebody and I think most businesses, and this is a business, look from within but if it's not there or you know it's not the right fit, sometimes you have to go outside. We've probably been fortunate because the last few principals we've hired were people that were already on staff. And we have been fortunate in that. We'd like to think that we do build our own, but we posted everywhere in this particular position, and we had three candidates that um, were our top selections, and two of them were out of district. We were open-minded. We had a committee, and the committee certainly saw Mr. Marshall as fitting our needs. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's also a compliment when you have to rehire positions like principals. Mr. Woody retired, but Dr. Hannaford uh, he got a very good position at Northwestern and Alva, and, and certainly I know that people think that's going to be their last job, but it doesn't always work out either. That's right. We made a few other changes. Um, Paul McQueen was assistant principal at East, 8th grade, and he's moving to be the 11th, 12th grade assistant principal at the high school. He'll also be helping out with the 9th grade netbooks, because all 9th graders will have the netbooks this coming year. And Marissa Pruitt will be halftime. Uh, technology director and half-time assistant principal at East Middle School this year. You mentioned hiring and uh, it's interesting how did that go with retirements and resignations and people that may have moved? Was there a lot of activity or was it a pretty quiet summer from the standpoint of having to make sure all the classrooms are filled? Very quiet summer. A small group we've ever hired so far. There's still two or three more weeks uh, before school starts, so there'll be some movement in between. Smallest group ever that I've seen in the, in the last 14, 15 years. Uh, and, and also a lot of the higher positions, the administration, the board positions, not a lot of movement there, so right. that also takes some pressure off. Hiring a new high school principal certainly is a big, big job, but other than that, uh, probably everything else was in place. We, we had two, uh, two or three, I mean, all, all of our positions are important. A, a new head band director, uh, Mr. David Christie, and uh, he, he'll be on with us in the next couple of weeks. And we have a new uh, vocal music director, so we're real excited about them, along with a variety of other new teachers. So at this point, with school about uh, four weeks away, right. everything, uh, unless we have something unexpected, everything's pretty well in line to start the school year. Doors will be open and we'll be starting. Wow. August 10th, first day. It, well, uh, we intend to have every classroom filled. I know, and I, I know that there's a lot of concerns right now. I would, I would think that making sure your buildings are cool and comfortable for your teachers and your students would be right up there at top, too. It is. We have some construction going on in district, but we're handling that. I know the, the HVAC guys are working like crazy, keeping those air conditioners up and cool, particularly in our new construction areas. But uh, so far, so good. 
Absolutely. Dr. Nancy Neiman is our guest today, and uh, a couple of things that we wanted Dr. Neiman to talk about that she addressed the Board of Education for the July board meeting. Uh, the flexible benefit allowance, that is something that obviously affects a lot of employees in our school district, if you could. Right. Flexible benefit is basically our health insurance. That's what we're referring to. And um, each year, our budget for the district is somewhat of a guesstimation. We know what we have to have to operate, and we receive funding from the state. We have initial allocation has not been received yet, but we know the overall budget. The big deal for us is the flexible benefit, and that is our health insurance. We provide health insurance for all support employees that work 30 hours or more, and all certified teachers that work 55% or more. Um, and that is 12 months. This year, the way the legislature did, they appropriated money for the State Department of Education. Within that budget, State Department of Education, uh, led by Dr. Barisi, had to line item what they were going to fund. Well, state law clearly states that flexible benefit health insurance will be paid by the legislature. The legislature's claim is they gave the money to the State Department and Dr. Barisi um, doled it out in other manners through her line items. Bottom line is $34 million that was needed for flexible benefit across the state was not allocated. We're $34 million short. In Ponca City, it's roughly $300,000. What they did is they funded it from September 1 through July. We work on a fiscal year. We fund, actually our teachers uh, receive it from September 1 through August. Two months, July and August, are not going to be funded. That, that's a lot of money for mm -hmm. us, around $300,000. So uh, we're working with our legislators. They're working with Dr. Barisi. We're looking at other avenues. We believe it is the state's responsibility to make sure that that is paid. Very difficult situation, isn't it? Very difficult. The other difficult budget issue is the National Board Certified Teachers. We don't have a lot of them here in Ponca City, but we have several. They were promised by the state legislature that they would receive $5,000 for a 10-year period when they receive National Board Certification. That money flows through us, but it's not our money. We sign off on how many National Board Certified Teachers we have. They send us a check we turn around and send them a check. That was cut completely. It was um, um, reduced the last two years, which teachers were not happy about, to be cut completely for those teachers that have uh, completed that very rigorous process. Kind of unfair to them. Very, very much so. You know, we, we speak each month with uh, Dr. Pennington, whether it be on this or however, and, you know, one of the strengths of, of Dr. Pennington is the way he can keep up with that. But I think that we're also seeing that there's a trickle-down effect. Everybody that works in this building on West Grand, you all pretty much have to be in tune with what the legislature, Dr. Barisi, no matter who it is, you have to watch it very closely. Absolutely. I oversee all the financials for the district and the human resources. So what the legislature is doing, we pay attention to that because that's funding. So in the buck stops with you, so to speak, huh? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Whether it be yes. good or bad. That's so. correct. So we're, we're all taking cuts. Okay. Uh, you also wanted to address uh, board members redistricting. Are we going to see some of that? Um, I don't believe so at this time. Uh, Dr. Pennington has been working out the State Department about redrawing the board uh, districting uh, boundaries. They've taken a look at that, trying to keep each of the quadrants, each of the areas equal. They're pretty equal right now. So when they looked at redistricting, anytime you just move the line a little bit here, a little bit there, it throws everything off. So the recommendation will be no changes. Good. Uh, you are, as you just said, uh, responsible for finances. Uh, is there anything to report to our constituents about the, the finances of our schools? One of the things that we've talked with Dr. Pennington about is that, mm -hmm. you know, compared to a lot of people, uh, we are in better shape than a lot of school districts. We are. I actually did the board uh, budget hearing last month in June, and that was a public hearing. Uh, we reported on that. We have a nice carryover this year. We're always uh, concerned further down the road. This year we're going to do fine. We have made several uh, personnel cuts because 90% of the budget, so to speak, is in personnel costs. If we make cuts, that's where it needs to be. Um, so we, we are doing that. We have a healthy carryover. 
we know that this time next year we will not be talking about as large of a carryover. That, that's the issue. I'm planning for the following year. You plan a year ahead, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. You know, maybe even more than that. <laughs> that's right. So. I'm looking at the 2012-2013 year. So we're ready to go this year. We've made some cuts. We'll probably make more by this time next year. You said it was a pretty ordinary summer meeting. Anything else that uh, struck you in, in the July meeting that you think we need to know about? Um, let me, we did the um, quality time analysis. That's a yearly report that the State Department requires. It's how much time students are actually on task doing uh, work. We take a look at that. Uh, do we have PEP assemblies or announcements that are taking away from possibility of instructional time? We work with the principals and the teachers to keep all that down to the minimum. But we do report that to the state. So many school districts, if you read uh, the Tulsa paper or the Oklahoma City paper, there's so much going on with uh, the, the two larger school districts or the two largest about school times, about uh, all of that that may be confusing to people. They may, is there anything that's going to change about 2011 from 2010? Not, uh, not in our school times. Uh, the children in Ponca City actually attend more days than is required or days than most districts in the state of Oklahoma. We also go a little bit longer school day, basically 8 to 3. We have a couple of schools that have varied that a little bit with their rise and shine or morning assemblies kick off around 7.45. A couple of schools get out around 3.20, 3.25. But basically that's our school day, 8 to 3. Um, it's going to be fascinating to watch Oklahoma City this year. They're on their continuous calendar. They'll be starting school August 1, but they will not go more days. It'll just be um, longer throughout the year, such as three, three or four weeks at Christmas, two weeks at spring break, extra week at fall break. You know, it's a possibility. We are interested in talking to the community this year. I think I'll be putting together some sort of a, a survey so that we can reach throughout Ponca City to see if we'd be interested. Not more days, just more breaks, and involve more months. Yeah. Going into the summer, starting a little earlier, ending a little later, giving a few more breaks in there. Uh, you see more of that, and I guess they're, they're, if you will, guinea pigging this for the entire state. We'll That's watch right. and see, see what happens. And they're not the first district in the state of Oklahoma. Tulsa had 33 or 34 schools that were year-round schools the last several years. I think they're down to one or two right now. It also provides breaks for students that need additional information, that need additional teaching, such as we do summer school. Mm -hmm. uh, they may do a week at Christmas, an extra week at um, spring break, not for all the kids, but the kids that need extra instruction in reading or math. I, I wanted to mention one more thing because I, uh, before I came over to sit down with you, Mary Ladd had sent me uh, an information piece about uh, the students the last day of July getting their yearbooks. Oh, and right. uh, it's something that is, is very new, but the night of the 31st, uh, with the cooperation of the community and the police department, uh, the students are going to get to come to Ponca City High School in the Commons and pick up their yearbooks at 11 o'clock that night. Right. It'll be fun, just like a Harry Potter party. It's a premiere night, and uh, I think it's called Find Yourself. Mm -hmm. They'll be bringing their magnifying glasses to find themselves in the yearbook. It sounds like a lot of fun. I believe seniors get to go at 11, and everyone else will be able to report at midnight with the party over at 2 a.m. Uh -huh. And special permission <laughs> for the kids to be out that late. Sure, too. because we do have uh, restrictions on mm -hmm. students out and about, and uh, they'll have bracelets so that police officers and parents will know who they are and where they're to go at 2 a.m. <laughs> Absolutely. Good to see you. Everything okay? Yes, yes. Okay. We're you excited about the year. Our uh, nice new board behind us, uh, uh, courtesy of Chris Adams. <laughs> this is, uh, I believe, the high school, and so Looks great, I doesn't hope it, it? I hope it looks uh, looks that good when we start school, too. I'm sure it will. <laughs> I do, too. Nancy, thanks very much. Thank Dr. Nancy Neiman on the July Board Wrap-Up.